What's going on guys? So another one of these top five list videos we're doing this week. If you guys hadn't watched last week's, it was a great topic on the top five functional food and beverage product trends that I see happening um, in 2019. And in that video, I kind of mentioned that over the next couple of weeks, because we're getting to the end of the calendar year, um, that I was gonna be sprinkling in some of these top five lists that were both forward-looking, predicting the future type topics, uh, but also reflective and looking at some trends or movements that were happening throughout 2018. And you guys click this video so you guys know what this topic is about. This particular topic is around the top five biggest movers in the sports nutrition world in 2018. So before I kind of get started on the on my top five and a few honorable mentions that I'll, I'll kind of throw in at the beginning, I wanna talk a little bit about metrics or variables about how I kind of put this list together. If you guys have watched my YouTube or followed me over the last few years of putting out content, you guys know I'm a uh, functional CPG management and strategy consultant. I work a lot with nutritional supplements, sports nutrition, uh, functional food, functional beverage companies, um, some beauty and some other ancillary functional CPG categories. Because I'm in client services and work with brands on kind of all spectrums of the revenue base, I have a pretty good sense of the market, where things are going um, on both micro and macro levels and Though I don't have the benefit a lot of times of using quantitative um, data with analyzing some financial reports because most of the sports nutrition brands are not publicly traded, um, I do have a great deal of, of other analytical type of revenue reports that I get from my different sources. And then, you know, qualitatively, I understand in all the causes effects that are going on in the industry. So I think I have a pretty good handle. Um, and though I didn't like necessarily define these metrics or variables in a nice clean, uh, clean matrix list or anything, I'm as informationally objective as possible here, regardless if I work with any of these um, clients or not. But Let's get into this list. You, I don't want to bore you guys any longer with um, me validating myself on why my list might or might not mean anything. Quite honestly, I just enjoyed putting this piece of content together. So honestly, I could care less if it has validity in the market or not. It was a fun piece of content to put together. So let's kick this off. Let's get started. So before I roll into my top five that I'm going to be doing from five to one. I want to kind of throw a couple honorable mentions in there. Uh, brands that I saw some, you know, some good things happening for over the last year, but just didn't break into my top five. And I'll kick this one off with uh, a brand that I have been kind of viewing from the outside and kind of seeing what they've been doing, and that is Myoblox. So what I like most about Myoblox is, you know, it's kind of run by a creative. You have some really unique refined packaging. You have some unique kind of storytelling. Uh, you know, they use social media very well. From a product formulation standpoint, products are well made, uh, well formulated. The only thing that I would necessarily knock them for is that uh, they seem to be really focused on kind of brick and mortar, which you know, depending on their aspiration level and their intentions, uh, could be a good play for them. So I'd like to see kind of over the next year if they mature in some of their Amazon and direct-to-consumer strategies uh, over the next year. Next one is going to be uh, my buddies at Man Sports. Uh, Man Sports has been around for a long time, uh, you know, and what I think has been different this year over other years is that they're taking hard lines in, you know, their kind of core values in their brand. You see their stances on, on different things, maybe politically. I mentioned in a video this week about kind of corporate social responsibility, this idea of like woke marketing, having hard lines or having more of a humanistic stance on social or society topics that are going on. I also like that they're attacking kind of different markets. Uh, you see them moving into more like media influencers or political influencers. You see them moving into uh, rodeo. Those are not typical. Those are not typical areas that you see sports nutrition brands focusing on. And I think it's, 
I think it's a good move. I think it's one that attracting new customers and kind of getting out of the rat race that way. I think they're also kind of really focusing, leaning on digital, um, direct to consumer. I think you know this obviously plays well into one of their partners, Alex McRae, being extremely um, proficient in that area. I think it's just natural that they move uh, move towards more of a digital heavy strategy. And to transition into the last honorable mention, uh, another digital only company here is the Genius Brand. So over the last year, I've had a chance to you know get to know their um, get to know their founder, Rob Oliver. Great guy. Um, have nothing but nice things to say about him and his approach to the sports nutrition market. I think his purpose, uh, his brand's purpose, I think it's been playing extremely well in the market. I think from product standpoint, uh, using as many um, validated ingredients as possible in dosages that are appropriate uh, is is obviously a very noble cause in this industry. Uh, So his kind of transparency and his ability to you know, sway a large uh, amount of customers on a marketplace platform like Amazon is something that I wanted to make sure I mentioned. Let's shift out of honorable mentions. Let's move into kind of the top five. I'm gonna move from five to one, hopefully to build up some, some excitement throughout this list. So my number five pick, I'm actually gonna pick a portfolio of products and not necessarily one brand. And this one's gonna be Glambia Performance Nutrition. Quite honestly, throwing this into the list is in a way going to maybe shock people, maybe turn people off on this whole list. But honestly, I think people underestimate this portfolio. Last year, they did somewhere around, uh, somewhere around $1.3 billion in revenue far and away kind of our biggest sports nutrition brand that's you know not counting an MLM company. What's even kind of more impressive is that they're seeing about a 5% growth in the first nine months of 2018. And that's off of I think a seven or 8% volume increase. That 5% off of $1.3 billion base, quite honestly, is a bigger growth than any of the companies that I'm gonna mention total revenue for 2018. So I think we underestimate just the sheer strength and kind of incremental um, incremental growth that uh, Glambia's performance nutrition brands have seen in the market this year. And primarily why I put them on the list is that they are moving in a very aggressive way towards where I believe the market going. And that is, you know, functional foods, um, the kind of ready to eat category, functional um, beverages, that's the ready to drink categories. And they're really focusing on the food, drug, mass, convenience, club, um, all of those areas that are building out larger subsections of their stores for kind of this better for you or healthier for you section. And Glambia is shifting a lot of their focus towards those areas of growth. You see them in their product development right now, you see it in their hiring practices, you see them in their activities of where they're kind of spending a lot of their time and effort. And it has helped them transition you know, out of a brand that was gonna struggle if they continuously focused primarily only on you know, small specialty retailers, legacy internet retailers. They needed to take their rightful place in those established channels for a billion dollar brand. Um, A lot of the consumers that shop at a Walmart or um, shop at a 7-Eleven probably don't know Glambia uh, and they don't know the brands that are in there. They don't know the Optimal Nutrition, they don't know the BSNs, they don't know the Isopeers and they should because those are massive brands and they have a lot of validity in the market for for buyers that wanna buy functional performance-based products What I also kind of like about Glambia is that they're moving towards, you know, wellness purchases, um, you know, be it SlimFast, which, you know, they picked up on a garage sale. Um, And then I think the Amazing Grass brand has a lot of um, interesting play in the market. Uh, You saw the Amazing Grass brand, you know, do extremely well over this last year. Because Glambia has kind of their tentacles and everything, I also like their willingness to work on private labels for Amazon, private labels for uh, Walmart. So they're really working with the largest sports nutrition retailers on a, on a really intimate level. But 
let's transition out of Glambia and into my number four spot. And that one's gonna be Sparta Nutrition. When I first moved to Austin, Texas, one of the first meetings that I had in Austin with just kind of industry people getting my networking in a new city was Mike Roberto, the founder of Price Plus. While we were talking, uh, I kind of alluded to wanting to help Mike on a bunch of different projects that I thought were, uh, were important in this kind of transitionary period of his business. And for a certain period of time, I kind of lent my ear to the ground and talked to some of his um, some of his potential customers that were looking to either create some content, written articles, maybe some marketing efforts. And one of those brands were Sparta Nutrition. And at the time they were an extremely hardcore brand. I remember some of the conversations around them being a hardcore brand and you know, what was the aspiration of when they were gonna kind of shift. And I think this was the year that they did that. Um, you know, they did a rebrand that rebrand, though I think it looks very similar to Health Warrior. Um, not to say that's a bad thing, guys, because Health Warrior did just get acquired by PepsiCo. So obviously that branding angle is doing extremely well. That new rebrand does look very mainstream, does fit for kind of their new channels that they're going into, one of them being Vitamin Shop. I think Vitamin Shop with their um, with their focus on keto, which Sparta Nutrition has a keto line, plus having some good products within kind of popular uh, product categories. It's gonna work very well for Sparta in a place like Vitamin Shop. At the end of the year, they also kind of announced that they're gonna be doing a protein bar, a cereal-based protein bar, which I think is going to be one of the things that you're gonna see a lot more brands kind of doing uh, this year. You've already seen a few people announce those. Uh, I think cereal, for whatever reason, seems to be a hot trend uh, with flavoring or kind of product innovations in the sports nutrition world. Overall, I just think, you know, they have some momentum going on with their business, and I was impressed uh, of the movement that they've had over this past year. Let's move into my number three biggest mover of 2018, and that is MTS Nutrition. So, love them or hate them. Uh, Mark Lobliner has built a strong personal brand in the sports nutrition world. If you guys follow him on Instagram, you guys know he puts more effort than any CEO that I see uh, in adding value to his community. He's constantly kind of doing Q&A. He's constantly giving value. He does a ton of different YouTube content, you know, lends his hand in some articles and he's really created a lot of momentum around his brand. This is obviously one brand that you can kind of take a look at through kind of Inc. 500 um, awards and you can see the growth that's happening year over year. I think though he's, you know, had some great uh, products in his lineup, I think the Outright Bar and the just kind of the new functional foods a focus for MTS Nutrition has really moved them in a really great direction. He also kind of has a yin and a yang going with sales channel strategy. Um, you see him moving into mass uh, specialty retailers, a complete nutrition, a GNC, but in a, a very controlled way um, through kind of their franchise networks. And he's able to build kind of one by one uh, effort and kind of control that, make sure that his message, his products are positioned in the right way. And then on the flip side, he has, you know, Tiger Fitness is, you know, helping him be kind of vertically integrated, have him be in a way, acts as kind of MTS's direct-to-consumer site. And, you know, they produce a lot of content there. They have a lot of eyeballs. They're gaining, uh, they're gaining some of the customers that are leaving uh, bodybuilding.com. Um, they're obviously not gaining all those. The vast majority of them are probably going to Amazon, but um, they are gaining um, some of that. You can see that again with Tiger Fitness being on Inc. 500, Inc. 5000 list over the last couple of years. But I think over this past year, I've seen a lot more movement in the MTS brand. Um, they're taking a lot more controlled risks with some of the product offerings that have moved them a lot over the last year. So down to the last two, I think most of us, uh, most of us in the sports nutrition world can probably guess the two brands that I'm talking about. Arguably, probably the two fastest growing um, from a year over year growth perspective in the industry. Uh, both of them in certain ways remind me to the muscle farm days when I worked kind of during the hyper growth phase. Both of these brands could be number ones on, on certain uh, different lists. 
But my number two biggest moving brand in the sports nutrition world in 2018, I'm gonna give this one to Redcon One. So like Mark Lobliner with MTS Nutrition, Aaron Singerman has built you know, a very strong personal brand in the sports nutrition world. His hard work, like Mark's, is extremely noticeable. Aaron has created a culture within Rencon One of hard workers and people that are really singularly focused on you know, building the biggest sports nutrition brand um, in the world. Now I think Aaron and, and Redcon One have a great amount of momentum building on their business. They are kind of playing the, uh, you know, the doors game in a sense, like they have a ton of scale at a very quick pace. Mass specialty retailers, direct to consumer, Amazon, um, opening up a bunch of new territories on international. Um, you see them just kind of trying to be everywhere um, as fast as possible, most aggressive as possible. Um, you also see them being extremely promotional in their direct to consumer. They're constantly kind of having, um, constantly trying to bring attention to direct, um, which I definitely support. Um, I think controlling your own destiny is an extremely important point that all brands, regardless of on their list or not, need to be focusing on. Regardless if there's houses burning around you, you need to be focused on how to protect your own house. And the only way to do that is kind of through direct to consumer. Even though Aaron and his team has kind of been everywhere, they, they, I don't really see a lot of channel conflicts that are kind of happening. I think everybody is riding the momentum. I also like their, you know, focus on functional foods with their, uh, with their protein bar, their MRE bar. Um, I think they're also coming out with a cereal bar that I kind of mentioned earlier. Um, I think they're launching a, a um, ready to drink on their uh, Total War, their ACE pre-workout SKU. Two concepts that I talk a lot about that I think they also do very well at is kind of a constant launching of uh, products and flavors um, to create this kind of mind share. I think with the, with the massive amount of noise in the market, regardless if it's a sports nutrition or anything. Consumers are getting, you know, are getting flooded with, with offers, marketing, you know, whatever from consumer businesses. So I think businesses that kind of use constant launchings to kind of keep mind share happening um, and pair that with, you know, increased market share, which I think, you know, all the kind of things I mentioned with retail um, obviously point to that uh, is a great thing. And I also, over the last year, I've seen, you know, the Redcon One team get a lot more refined in some of their creative output. You can definitely tell that either there's gonna, there's been some new hires in there or just some new ideas that are getting thrown around. Number one, we're gonna be giving this award uh, for the biggest moving sports nutrition brand in 2018. We're gonna give this to Ghost Lifestyle. <laughs> You know, maybe Redcon from a revenue base maybe is growing uh, faster than Ghost Lifestyle. But what I like most about Ghost Lifestyle is that they're controlling the distribution of their brand right now. You know, it's only physical stores with GNC or direct to consumer. You can't get it anywhere else at this point outside of just outside of some different areas, maybe internationally. That controlled distribution helps them also kind of control their messaging, hold the, control their brand position, um, control just every aspect of their business. And this probably hurts their revenue in the short term, but ultimately builds a very strong foundation for a brand long term. I think one thing that separates Ghost Lifestyle from other brands in the industry is that they're building a brand. They are building a very exclusive, different experience that you get from product companies in the industry or just cookie cutter, kind of half-assed approaches to brand creation. This is what I think separates and makes Ghost Lifestyle be my number one pick. Highly impressed with just brand management, their ability to kind of constantly innovate innovation. If I could take a phrase from uh, Dan, their, one of their founders, they are advocates of transparency. They're advocates of great flavor systems. Those things are what most in the industry talk about when they're, when they're saying, you know, a brand is being innovative. But it, you know, Ghost Lifestyle has moved past just having good flavors and working on exclusive licenses with 
you know, candy brands. I know they have other ones in the works right now that I think will be launched throughout 2019. That creates a different emotion within buyers than having a, you know, a, a flavor that mimics a certain nostalgic uh, candy brand or cookie brand or cereal brand. Um, you know, having that licensed product creates a different emotion. It creates a more exclusive, um, exclusive attachment to a nostalgic feeling. They also take, you know, a step past you know, the the traditional, uh, you know, marketing approach with events. They they move more experiential, move into pop up shops, move into um, the ability for you to feel the brand. They have a lot of influencers that are very well aligned with the brand's image and really represent the brand extremely well. They're all very good storytellers as well, which helps lend a great brand building hand to Ghost Lifestyle because they complement them very well. But I think Ghost Lifestyle also does an extremely great job at brand storytelling, their use of social media, both from the you know digital marketing side and just like the outward creative side is very well refined they are utilizing kind of the behind the brand aspect to create a voyeuristic a peek behind the curtains of a, of a fast-growing brand uh, content a series that focuses on you know the projects the people that are in the business um, and just kind of their ideas but I've been on this train since the first week they launched their brand before they had any traction in the market before anybody knew who they were um, and regardless of, you know, me seeing the growth over these last two years, I still think this year they saw a great amount of movement. I think it's going to spill over into 2019 and we'll be talking about them again next year on this list. So hopefully you guys got some value out of this list. You guys had some enjoyment out of this list. If you guys think I'm crazy, you guys think this list is terrible. You guys would like to see, uh, you guys would like to name your top five list. All those things, comment below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. And if you guys got some enjoyment, value out of this content, um, I would ask that you guys hit the thumbs up button that's right below you. That helps me out a ton with the uh, YouTube algorithm to kind of spread this video out to more people. Um, if you guys have not done this so far, I would love to have you guys a part of this channel. And if you guys want to interact with me on any of my social channels, all of the links are down below in the description. But I wanna thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to listen to me on this topic. And I'll see you guys on the next one.